currently many states are enacting legislation for um, appropriate, safe prescribing. And therefore, with states enacting that, pain is just a big buzzword right now. And so, it's very important because unlike other medications, opiates obviously do have very detrimental side effects if taken inappropriately, if taken at the wrong time, if taken um, when they shouldn't be taken. And therefore, um, safe prescribing is of utmost importance. Number one, to decrease diversion and abuse, but also to make it as safe and appropriate um, for our patient and our patient populations who are in pain. Many factors influence how we treat and how they're going to respond to the pain. Obviously, uh, mental aspect is so vital. A patient has to go in and, and your goals and their goals really do need to coincide because if they have different goals or you have different goals, then obviously somebody's going to leave the uh, relationship with negative outcomes or with, with negative feelings. Obviously, economics. Um, what state you're living in because states are um, cracking down on prescribing habits and they're actually scaring some providers into not prescribing or underutilizing appropriate medications. So location, um, economic reasons, and the providers themselves because sometimes they are not uh, knowledgeable enough in prescribing and how they prescribe to the patients to keep them safe as prescribers, to keep our patients safe, and to provide quality care. Genomic testing is a hot topic now, and it's a new thing coming around. It's a DNA testing, it's a swab. It's very easy to do, so it's an ease in testing. Once you do the test, it's done. So once the patient has undergone it, they don't have to undergo it yearly or any other time in their life. And so how it is helping us is for patients that are hard to prescribe to. Every medication doesn't work, or they tell you, this med nothing works for me or they're very sedated with low doses of medication, or they're on high doses and they're still not getting appropriate effects with appropriate dosing. Um, those are ways that genomic testing can truly be used and it kind of takes the art away from medicine. It's truly a science that we can now enact to help guide our prescribing habits. Drug testing is very, very important. Um, it's not the most important, it's not the only tool we use. It's simply a tool and it's simply one of the elements we use in guiding our prescriptive habits when we're talking about opiates or controlled substances. Um, it absolutely should be used in our practice and that how often is very likely up to what your state mandates or up to the prescriber or up to the patient. What's going on in the patient? Consider risks when you consider drug testing. If they're a higher risk patient, then you're going to urine drug screen them more often. What we know is urine drug screen is the most reliable and the easiest way to obtain um, drug screening. It's quick, so you can get a point of care test, um, which means you have some working knowledge of what is in that patient's urine when they leave their office, when they leave your, your office. Mass spectrometry, um, and that truly tells us at a chemical level what is in the urine. So that is what truly stands up in court um, if you would need to use that. Um, and that's very important. So urine drug screening is most important. Is there one company that's better than another? No, there's very many, lots of reliable testing uh, companies out there and you just have to find the one that's right for you. The good times are when patients get better. Uh, their pain ceases. So a chronic illness or a chronic musculoskeletal issue that's maybe taken longer than usual to heal does finally heal. Physical therapy has worked. Other interventions have worked. And so the patient is not needing pain medication as much. Their pain scores have decreased and you begin to wean them. So that's one reason and a very optimistic reason to wean pain medicine. Um, there's other reasons why you wean. If the patient simply is not getting appropriate pain relief from those doses at higher levels and you've tried to titrate them appropriately where they should be getting some adequate relief, um, then that might be a time to wean them from that medication. Consider a ro rotation to another opiate or maybe consider other alternatives like non-opioid therapy. And then of course there's patients that truly have aberrant or divertive behaviors that are doing something inappropriate with the medication. And that is when you absolutely need to wean them. And it's depending on the behavior is where you wean them very quickly or where you can wean them a little more slowly, but nonetheless get them off with the end result being to remove the opiate from the, the patient and from their system. 
think we need to not focus on opiates as much as we do. Um, pain is not absolutely parallel to opiate use. We need to consider all other alternatives when we are prescribing. Consider anti-inflammatories, consider anticonvulsants, consider mood modulators. Those are very important in treating our pain patients. Consider also alternatives such as um, yoga, exercise, acupuncture. Those things exist and those things work. We do have evidence-based information that shows us that those work. And also, referral is very important. So don't forget to refer our patients. Um, refer them to orthopedists, refer them to psychiatric therapy when appropriate, um, neurology. All those referrals are very important to us. But then on the flip side, don't be afraid to use an opiate where appropriate. Some of our elderly patients truly have to have opiates because other medications are so contraindicated um, and can actually have worse outcomes than the opiates can. Um, and we always believe in starting low and, and dosing those patients very slowly and titrating slowly. Mm -hmm.